everybody's going to agree your feet need to be on the floor, your back needs to be on the bench, and you need to press the fucking bar. I mean, the top layer is pretty simple. It's pretty cut and dry. Where the conversations and debates should happen would fall more on the... Why do so many top internet powerlifters suggest benching back towards the rack instead of a straight line like conjugate trained powerlifters suggest? I think the question is a little lack to begin with because you're making an assumption that all internet lifters, for however you want to define that, say that you need to bench back towards the rack and all conjugate style lifters say you need to bench in a straight line, which isn't necessarily true. So let's just address the question in general, should you bench in a straight line or should you bench back towards the rack? I don't think this is really a debate. I think it comes down to what fits your body structure the best. Some people are going to press better in a straight line. Other people are going to press better, you know, with the bar drifting back. But the most important thing is to look at what the commonalities between both of these things are. So what you want to do, regardless of what the bar path is, is you wanna make sure that your elbows are staying under the bar the whole time. So what I see a lot of times is you'll take somebody that, they're, say they're trying to bench in a straight line and then it drifts back, they never turn their elbows out when the bar's drifting back. So it ends up you know, smashing their face or ends up being a tricep extension to be able to lock it out instead of a push to be able to lock it out. So a lot of this really depends upon, you know, the length of the upper arm, where the bar is going to touch. But all that, it really becomes irrelevant because it's going, to be, it's going to be what's most comfortable to you. As long as your wrist is staying in line with, the, or the bar staying in line with your wrist. In other words, you're not letting your, the bar come back here. It's staying in line with the forearm. And then the forearm is staying in line with the wrist the whole time. You can press in a straight line or you can press, if you go to press back, you have to turn your elbows as you press back. You have to flare back. It's, it's two different styles of training. With the bench press, you got technique, style, and form. So there's, those all need to be accounted for. There's basic technique, which everybody knows is what you'll read everywhere. It's, you know, the, what do you want to say, book, book technique, whatever, whatever you want to say that is. Then it's going to fall into style, which is going to be more personal on what your body structure and so forth is. I think I screwed it up. It's form, which will be that. And then style, which is going to be your own personal things that you need to do to change it. Regardless of what the terminology is, it doesn't matter. There's going to be textbook technique. All right, that, that's what's taught. That's what's gonna be taught everywhere. That's what you need to know for your fucking stupid certifications and all this other stuff. For after that layer, you're gonna to get to a layer where you have to account for the individual's own body structure and mechanics. And whatever that is, is gonna determine what the bar path is gonna be, where the bar needs to touch on your chest. Does it have to touch high? Does it have to touch low? Once again, it all depends upon, you know, the length of the upper arm. It depends upon if your feet are out front, if your feet are arched. There's a lot of factors that go into that. And then the next layer down there are going to be what, what individual very, very specific differences do you have to make? And that can be because of your wrist is fucked up or, you know, injury history, you know, all those little tiny nuances that fall into there. When, when people that I see discuss technique, they only discuss it at the top layer. And then they debate the shit out of the top layer, which is fucking stupid because who cares? I mean, that's, everybody's gonna agree your feet need to be on the floor, your back needs to be on the bench, and you need to press the fucking bar. I mean, the top layer is pretty simple, it's pretty cut and dry. Where, where the conversations and debates should happen would fall more on the individual levels where I really don't even think there's a debate because everybody's going to be a little bit different under, you know, a watchful eye if somebody knows what they're doing. And more times than not, from what I've seen out of the seminars that we do is we'll have coaches that work predominantly with linear type models, you know, coaches that work with conjugate type models, you know, they come from different styles, you know, of lifting, 
But when it comes to working with an individual during one of our seminars, they always end up, regardless of what their background is or their own style of lifting is, they always end up at the same place with the same lifter. You know, so the teacher can be different, but if they're good, they're gonna always get the lifter where they need to be regardless of what their technique or style is. So that kind of justifies and illustrates that everybody needs to have their technique tweaked a little bit to their own individual structure and that will change as you get bigger, get smaller, you know, as your body structure changes, so may that, you know, and it will change if you're gonna use gear or not gonna use gear, but that's another conversation as well.